yes just uh, a minute just a minute okay. just a minute sir okay now streaming is on start you should i start uh okay okay proceed sir. welcome to all of you for the online one day online state level seminar on biodiversity in nature we are here with the eminent personalities in our college uh, our honorable in charge principal dr ev bale rao sir secretary of our janta shikshan samstha dr jayavant rao taudhuri then the speaker guest dr manjusha ingavale from the department of botany kishanvir mahavidyalay wai and the other speaker dr h s patil vidya pratishthan arts science and commerce college baramati friends i feel proud to say and introduce something about my institute on this occasion ours is the institute founded by learned sanskrit scholar padma shri lakshman rao lakshman shastri joshi in 1962 along with a veteran freedom fighter uh, honorable kishan vi kishan vi alias baba saheb vi uh, later on in 1967 Uh, janta shikshan samstha was founded and then the whole uh, responsibility for the education and all the management was taken over by our uh, honorable abba saheb veer and his uh, team members included the pratap rao bhosle lakshman rao patil and other board members in the due course of time college has made a remarkable progress under the leadership of our honorable former president pratap rao ji bhosle along with vice president honorable late lakshman rao patil and all his colleagues at present honorable madan rao madan dada pratap rao bhosle is our president and he is joined up by honorable shankar rao gadwe who is the vice president of our janta shikshan samstha at present we have more than 6500 students from junior and senior wing and from ycmou we have more than 2500 students taking education in various disciplines of arts commerce and science from 11 to pg and even having here the mphil and phd center our staff is well equipped well qualified with net set and phd degree and many staff members are working as a research guide our nss ncc sports and cultural departments are excelling in their fields at national and international level our alumni ekta shirke and kalidas hirve from sports department are the arjun award winner and many other alumni students they are occupying good positions in army police bank research industries and what not in india and abroad one of the most important uh, achievement and the dream project we have recently completed in 2016 that is jai kisan boy hostel which the idea was uh, coming from our president pratap rao ji bhosle stating that we should educate the people of the farmers who have committed suicide across the maharashtra and under his guidance more than 40 students they are taking uh, education in our institute this is all the way the free services are provided for everything to these particular boys so we are proud to have such a particular dynamic uh, our former president Uh, who has guided us in a very nice manner to serve the humanity with these words now i uh, switch to the today's uh, here the uh, theme regarding our theme of the webinar every year united states marks 22nd may as the international day for biological diversity to increase understanding and awareness of biodiversity issue This year, due to COVID-19 pandemic, the occasion is being commemorated on the online campaign only. The theme of the event is our solutions are in nature, and we have witnessed the changes in Ganges River and Himalayan regions when there were no human interferences. 
despite of all the technological advances we are completely dependent on the healthy and vibrant ecosystems for every possible thing water food medicine clothes fuel shelter and energy on land the most important ecosystems and the biodiversity refuges are the forest which are home for most of the earth's terrestrial biodiversity so also the fresh and marine water bodies foster the aquatic biodiversity healthy ecosystems can protect and spread can protect against the spread of disease where the native biodiversity is high the infection rate can be lower a global call to action will draw together political support scientific research and financial muscle to massively scale up the restoration in this webinar we will witness the biodiversity of diatoms which are very tiny organisms but they are having uh, immense importance as far as the oil and natural gases they are concerned and you will see the beauty of the diatoms in this particular lecture the first lecture we will witness so also the weeds which are obnoxious and uh, which are causing much damages into our agricultural fields what exactly the biodiversity and how to tackle with that we will see in the second lecture so with these words i wish all the uh, speakers to be the best and all the who are listening to these should gain much out of it we will have at the end the interactions taking place and thereby uh, we can learn some new avenues in the aquatic as well as here the terrestrial ecosystem so i welcome you all uh, our secretary uh devant rao choudhury sir i welcome you for this particular webinar our uh, beloved uh, uh, i in charge principal dr ib e. bhale rao i just welcome you and the guest speakers along with that uh, we have here some eminent personalities even in the research uh, dr sucheta karande then dr vanita karande then dr bamburudekar and dr uh, gharge sir they are with us right now so i welcome you all and the listeners in maharashtra and from i have noticed that some members they are from gujarat and karnataka i just welcome all the dignitaries and the fellow participants and my dear students you can just take the uh, this opportunity to have some discussions uh, more together i hand over this now to introduce uh, our uh, chief guest dr jayavant rao choudhury and uh, in charge principal dr balarao sir over to bakre sir please thank you sir thank you dr vaidya i am here to introduce honorable dr jay choudhury today chief guest for this inaugural program currently he is the secretary of our janta shikshan sanstha Dr. Choudhury enjoys the rare privilege of being associated with our institution right from the beginning. He had his undergraduate and postgraduate education in the erstwhile Arts and Commerce College of Hawaii. He also has received a degree in law. Immediately after completing his postgraduation, he joined as a lecturer in our college. Later, he became the head of Department of Commerce and Management. he had a rare opportunity to work as a principal of our kisanir mahavidyalaya for many years even after his retirement now he is closely associated with our institution as an active member of our alumni association recently he has joined again our fraternity this time as a secretary of our janta shikshan sanstha he has worked as a research guide and guided 12 students for phd and 16 students for mphil and they have completed their these degrees under his able guidance he has written and published more than 12 books on commerce and management and recently a book on business finance for post graduate commerce students he has contributed in marathi vishwakosh by writing more than 300 titles out of which about 80 are on nobel laureates in economics 
He has also been closely associated with Rotary International and contributed to Rotary in different capacities. Above all, he is a born teacher and likes to interact with students, teachers, and society whenever he gets an opportunity to do so. One more remarkable thing about his family is that all four members in his family are PhD holders. His wife, Abhijit, and Abhijit's wife, all are PhD holders. A recent Dr. Abhijit has been promoted to the post of professor on review of his quality work in radiology in the University of California in USA. So I welcome Honorable Dr. J. Saudhari for this program. Thank you very much. Again to Dr. Ramesh Vaithya. Hello, wait this, sir. Ah, sir. Ah. Ah, yes. Next round. Yeah. Uh, I take this opportunity to invite our secretary, Dr. Jayavantrao Chaudhary, for the inaugural speech. <clears throat> uh, well, friends, uh, today we are meeting online for online webinar a state level webinar on biodiversity in nature organized by our janta shikshan sanstas kishanvir mahavidyalay white we have our principal um, dr bhale rao as the chairman of this function, inaugural function, uh, Dr. Vaidya, Dr. Kamre, Professor Bakre, Professor Samir Pawar, all the professors, staff members, students, participants, uh, resource persons, Dr. Ingaule and Dr. Patil, and friends, it gives me great pleasure to inaugurate today's uh, state level webinar on biodiversity in nature. As uh, Dr. Vaidya has rightly said, that biodiversity in nature is a very important thing, and uh, especially in COVID 19 times. Uh, there are um, this study of biodiversity uh, is um, hardly attended, and, um, and there are so many properties of the of species, plants, this and that that is that are going to help uh, to maintain the environmental uh, factors and uh, protect environment. We have very great concern about the. Uh, environment these days and one of the important aspects of protecting preserving the planet preserving the environment is biodiversity in nature so very important theme has been selected for today's webinar of uh, researchers students professors of this subject uh, no doubt study, uh, research, this uh, biodiversity in nature. But uh, I think that this is very important and this is a, a interdisciplinary uh, sort of subject, which even um, other uh, students, professors should take interest in uh, biodiversity because whatever we see around, we see the planet, we see the trees, birds, everything, every species uh, is a part of biodiversity, a very important uh, aspect of biodiversity. So, um, friends, it is biodiversity is the variability among living organisms from all uh, sources. It is a diversity within species, between species, 
and of the ecosystems it forms the foundation of the ecosystem services that critically contribute to human well being is after all the ultimate aim of every study is the welfare of the human being welfare of the mankind so biodiversity also contributes biodiversity study of biodiversity also contributes to the human welfare and the welfare of the society in general so biodiversity and human welfare are closely related i may say that they are very very much correlated there is a positive correlation study of biodiversity biodiversity will necessarily contribute to the human welfare uh, in a positive manner but uh, uh, unfortunately that much uh, study and research uh, in this field um, uh, is not um, uh, taken care of it in uh, like sir said it includes all ecosystems whether managed or not managed because on some aspects of biodiversity uh, we have control we manage things but some of the aspects of biodiversity are not managed they are unmanaged and they take care of themselves it's a very sur um, uh, big surprise for all of us uh, so the ultimate aim of all the study biodiversity in nature and the various uh, aspects of biodiversity ultimately aim of studying biodiversity in the uh, uh, for the human welfare so i hope today's webinar will help the students professors participants in understanding and undertaking more research about the various aspects of biodiversity biodiversity in nature with these words on behalf of the management of the janta shikshan sausta president vice president and all the office bearers of janta shikshan sausta and uh, the principal of the college i wish i initially declare that today's webinar is inaugurated and i wish the webinar every success uh, today morning thank you very much thank you sir uh, we are honored with your great words and the depth of the knowledge you have in this particular subject we are delighted sir uh, thank you very much rightly you have pointed out the importance of biodiversity in the human concern and we are the people to take care of our environment and our mother nature so i now take this opportunity to request dr uh, sorry professor bakre sir to introduce our first speaker dr m v ingole madam over to bakre sir please yes thank you dr vaidya it is my privilege to introduce honorable dr mrs manjusha ingole she is working as assistant professor in kisanvir mahavidyalaya wai in the department of botany she has completed her msc degree in cytogenetics then mphil degree in carophytes and phd degree in fresh water diatoms she has written two chapters in research books she has published seven research papers and she has presented 12 research papers in different international conferences she has participated and presented in national conferences about 28 papers so she in his initial in her initial career she has done a very great job in attending and presenting uh, many research papers and she also has received three awards for best paper presentations okay she is member of our college development committee so in kisanvir mahavidyalaya 
she is a member of our college development committee and she is convener of several committees in our college which are related with welfare of girls students and women welfare okay she has been always the source of inspiration of our students maybe from any faculty arts commerce or science and now she will be del delivering a very informative lecture on fresh water diets so over to dr vaidya and dr manjusha indo thank you vakre sir uh, uh, again i uh, take this opportunity to thank our uh, secretary who has just inaugurated this function and uh, webinar on biodiversity in nature thank you very much sir on behalf of uh, thank you sir isanoy uh, mahavidyalay you, sir. and department of botany i thank you very much now i welcome dr mv ingawle to present her first lecture on biodiversity of fresh water diatoms so bakre sir has already introduced her biodata and she has done painstaking efforts to go with her study of bio uh, here the diatoms she has traveled across the satara district and she will be presenting some of the fascinating uh, slides on this particular aspect thank you uh, over to ingole madam please sir uh, i am audible yeah yes, uh, and yes, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, screen this day sir yes yeah. this day okay okay thank you good morning everybody thank you bakre sir for my introduction honorable dr j s choudhary secretary of janta shikshan sanstha principal dr e b bhale rao kisanvir mahavidyalay vai vice principal dr r r vaidya iqsc coordinator dr kamle sir resource person dr h s patil it gives me great pleasure and it is my honor to present my work in the state level webinar organized organized my parent institute before i begin i would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the honorable bau former presidents of janta shikshan sanstha honorable madan dada bhosle president of janta shikshan sanstha secretary dr choudhary sir ex principal dr c g avle sir as well as my research guide principal dr c t karande and professor dr v c karande today i take opportunity to present my work on diatoms all of you confuse what is diatoms where it is found how they identify the diatoms these are nothing but unicellular microalgae these are universally distributed in all types of aquatic environment and mainly sub aerial habitats diatoms are the eukaryotic algae belonging to class bacillophyce represent a major group among the phytoplankton diatom population is around 60% Bacillophyce is the most species-rich group among us, the algae. These algae are mainly characterized by their siliceous cell wall, which is composed of two walls. These two walls together forming a unit called the fistule. Diatoms multiply rapidly, and they are maintaining a dynamic population of varying size. Their size is less than ten micron. up to 500 micron the chloroplast in a diatoms are golden brown with pigments chlorophyll a chlorophyll c1 chlorophyll c2 together with xanthophyll such as fucoxanthin neofucoxanthin di ditoxanthin and didinoxanthin diatoms are crassulorhamnion b13 glucan and lipid as their food reserve lipids may be stored in high quantity with a high percentage of polyunsaturated fats t 
till today there is a no accurate estimate of the number of diatom species according to mun and drop a crop approximately 200 diatoms genera and over 2, 2 lakhs extinct species are expected to exist worldwide but in 2008 scientist alerson he already described about 25 thousand species of these diatoms before going to study these uh, diatom there is a special branch in biology which is termed as a diatomology and in that diatomology the study of these diatom is done there are diatoms which is found in marine water as well as the fresh water i only focus on the diatoms which is observed in the fresh water for this study i selected 11 water bodies means from this satara district i selected 11 major body uh, water bodies in them uh, dhom water dam venna lake kas water reservoir then uh, urmodi kanher uh, triputi dhavadshi and along with them from the dry region that is aund ner pingri up to rajewadi these 11 water bodies which is a present in a different geographical condition these are selected for this study of diatoms then the water sample is collected from these different water uh, localities in a laboratory their acidolysis is done permanent slides these are prepared and these are observed under the high power of a microscope for their observation oil immersion magnification is essential but these uh, oil immersion magnification is not sufficient for the identification of these diatoms up to their varieties level as well as the species level but for their proper identification and observation of a structure which is a present in them the electron micrography is essential therefore i also take scanning electron micro photograph of these diatoms which i show in these uh, today's uh, session before going to that we must know the structure of a diatom this is a structure of a diatom it is again a very simple one their wall as well as their cell structure is uh, made up of a two wall first is nothing but wall is term as a epithelia and second one is term as a hypothecia these are uh, two walls epithelia and hypothecia these are united in a such a manner it looks like our petri dish and these two wall these are having the structure in this manner means this wall structure of diatom these are having the central region in that central region this a central nodule is a present then this a filamentous structure which you observe in the middle that is term as a raphi these raphi is mainly responsible for the movement of this diatom then there are terminal end which is a present these are term as a polar region and in that polar region these are polar nodule these are present these are having the cell wall and on the surface of these diatoms on the surface of these diatoms a uh, Uh, thickening is a present this thickening is a present in the form of a striation and this thickening is again a very very important for the identification of these diatoms therefore for the identification of this diatom the measurement of their length measurement of a diameter is a taken but along with that which type of ornamentation is a present on that a diatom cell again on their wall surface Uh, which type of a covering is a present that covering is present either in the form of a striation in the form of a pores in the form of a spines as well as a punctuations which type of a situation or arrangement of a raphi is a present on the structure of a diatom it is also very very essential means the keen observation of these diatom cell is done under the high power of a microscope that is under the 100x magnification of microscope and then it is observed under scanning electron microscope these diatoms when we study their structure as well as a morphology it is a convert it is a divided into two main order first is nothing but a central 
and another is the as a pin nails. The basic difference in between these two diatom cell is in this manner. The centrals these are centric diatoms means their shape is a circular one, and pin nails means these are pin nail diatoms. These are bilaterally symmetrical one. These are bilaterally symmetrical. Again, on the basis of these raphi, these are present or absent. Then where it is a present, it is a more or small. Again, single raphi is a present, or in these two wall, two raphi is a present. All these uh, points, these are taken into consideration, and the identification of these diatom is done. Here, the first central orders. In that central orders means I told you that their shape is a radical one as well as a circular one. And in that cyclotella, we found that there is a marginal portion and a central portion. Marginal portion and central portion, it is a differentiated. And here in this uh, cyclotella atomus, there is a central and marginal zone. It is not a differentiated one. Means this stri, it goes inward into the central portion. In case of this cyclotella astrocostata. In this cyclostella astrocostata, these long tubular structure, external tube, these are present towards the marginal side. These are external long tube. These are present, and it is with photo porcelly. Then, in case of a cyclostella pseudostellargia, we observe the striation which is present in a marginal region and central region. These are a differentiated one. In this pseudostellargia, there is a striation which is present in the central region. These are stellate like, while towards the margin, it becoming radially fascic fasciculate. Then the next one is nothing but a cyclotella stellargia. Here we clear cut differentiated between the marginal and central striation which is present. And in this case, there is a marginal. Uh, region it is having this uh, tubular structure which is term as a costi it is term as a costi and these are again a labellate aperture then in this uh, cyclotella menigianiana we observe this a uh, marginal zone which is having the strong radially arranged uh, striation but when we observe carefully we found that toward the margin it is a broad one and when it is a faces towards the center, it becoming tapering. This is nothing but a cyclostella menigiana. Then next the genus after cyclostella, cyclostephanus. These are cyclostephanus. In these cyclostephanus, we found that these areolar stri, which is a present, it is a, a multi-seriate one in the wall margin. This is a sty which is a present. It is a multi-seriate one. Then next genus is a stephanodiscus. This is a stephanodiscus having the areolar sty which is a uniseriate one. It means single line. This is a sty we observe. Therefore, the term uniseriate is used. Then the next genus which is a coming in these uh, uh, centrals that is nothing but alocasira. This alocasira, the cells which is a present, these are elongated one. And this number of elongated cells, these are attached with each other and it results into formation of a filaments. These filaments, these are attached with each other. And on that basis, there are these two genus. One is nothing but ambigua and another variety is angustissima. This ambigua variety in that these two cells, these are attached with each other in a such an interlock fashion as well as a jeep-like manner. While in case of a angustissima, we found as such a type of a two spines in these diagrammatic representation. One is here and another is going a downward direction. These are two spines, these are responsible for binding these two cells of a allococeria. Then next genus, these are the photo, these are taken under the uh, oil immersion microscope as well as in these, uh, the genus Melosira. This Melosira is uh, characterized by here the wall mantle, it is a thick one. Wall mantle is a thick one and it is possesses 
the incurved interior each cell these are possesses these incurved interior while the next genus is a pleurosphera these a pleurosphera it is again a rounded one but it is having peculiarity and that peculiarity is nothing but towards the margin it having these a bubbles like structure in these a pleurosphera actually two bubbles these are present and it is termed as a ocelli but i also found these a pleurosphera which is having these three ocelli then next is a coming eraphites meaning of eraphites means there is a filamentous structure which is a present in them is a totally absent and in that uh, eraphites the first genus which is a coming diatoma when we observe these diatoma cells no doubt it is a raf, uh, in that raphi is absent but in these striae these are also absent and these are transverse we observe structure these is distinct transverse structure is term as a costi these are a costi present in this diatoma the second genus is staurocerella these are staurocerella in them the cell is elliptical one the cell is elliptical one and uh, it is a very small one and it is attached with each other with the help of these lineolate striae after that fragilaria the cells of these fragilaria these are rectangular to lanceolate it is again having longer in a length and these number of cells these are attached with each other and therefore it results into formation of a filaments and these are always found in a colonies due to their attachment and that is term as a fragilaria after that next gene genera is a coconis these are coconis their wall is elliptical or circular these are having the transversely bent these are having the transversely bent the striation is, this is nothing but a girdal view of a coconis when we study these diatoms we observe these diatoms in their dorsal view ventral view girdal view which type of a situation is the scene of that diatoms in our slide on that basis the views these are determined ventral view dorsal view or girdal view then next genus is nothing but ulnaria these ulnaria wall is a very long very long means more than 100 micron their length we observe and it is a linear one elongated one when we observe the varieties of these ulnaria then their tip portion it showing the various shape and in these uh, genera towards the end these labiate process is a present this is nothing but a, towards the terminal end this labiate process is a present the striation which is a present these are parallel with each other and this is nothing but ulnaria acus their terminal end is having rounded but here constriction in these uh, aptus variety it is a uh, totally rounded and the arrangement of a stri means towards the margin it is larger in size and when it is goes towards the central portion it becoming smaller one next one is this mp rhinoceros these are again having such type of appearance and only when we observe the striation which is seen in this light microscopy of these ulnaria it is under electron microscope we observe such type of a striation on their wall and this is nothing but a ulnaria then next genus is enosia this is nothing but a enosia camelis these are identify on the basis of these Uh, ridges present on their dorsal side when we observe these ridges normally in them four ridges are present and that species is nothing but a camelis but i observe such a type of a enosia in a different water localities where their ridges number is more than these four one when these enosia pentalis is observed under electron microscope we observe that such type of their shape it is having here very short raphi and therefore it is coming under the pro raphids raphi is a present but it is a very short and it is a present uh, in this case here enosia when we observe the striation we found that the striation which is a present here the uh, striation in middle the bifurcation is seen 
in that a middle fashion and it is a becoming concentric fashion towards their end it is nothing but a inosia pectanis then after that the next genus is coming it is coming under monoraphids means out of these two wall one wall having raphi and another wall is without raphi therefore it is coming under the monoraphid in that monoraphid the first genus is acanthidium when we observe their shape their size their terminal end in all these this raphi system these are totally absent but the present presence of these number of spy in a 10 micron when we observe it shows the variation the arrangement of a spy line in the central portion towards the terminal portion in is these three it is a uh, varies from one another and therefore it is again helpful for differentiation of this acanthidium in these uh, uh, different uh, that is a uh, minutissimum again variety affinil affinis and in this catenata when we observe we found that these striations these are parallel with each other parallel with each other their shape is also varies from each other then the acanthidium convergence it is a very small uh, that is uh, species are found their shape is elliptical one as well as a rounded one and uh, in this uh, case we found that towards the marginal portion this uh, hyaline region is uh, present hyaline portion is uh, present towards the margin is colorless in that uh, region hyaline means colorless there is uh, no striation such a thing is uh, seen in that uh, acanthidium convergence then next this is uh, species is exigium in them we observe in a central portion a uh, hyaline region and that hyaline portion is uh, rich towards the margin then next one is nothing but a uh, acanthidium inflex impexi formisa in it is uh, characterized by in this a uh, 10 micron the number of striation is uh, more it is a uh, nearer seated and these uh, striations which is a uh, present in the middle region these are again radiate one and it become convergent towards the terminal end after acanthidium next genus is acanthus this is a girdle view and in that girdle view we observe that this acanthus inflata these are longitudinally bent it is a longitudinally bent and acanthus inflata after that the next genus is a coming and it is nothing but a term as a stauronis the meaning of a stauron means hyaline portion hyaline portion it is a present in the middle and due to which this genus is labeled as a stauronsis and here it is a capitata because the terminal ends is like cap and these raphi these are diverted towards the one end and such a situation is a present in that stauronis the second genus is a frustulia frustulia it is a prism like structure but in this case we observe these raphi and is a polar nodal which is a present here these a polar nodal these are joined with each other by this rib and these rib continuously cover that raphi and it is a characteristic of this genera frustulia that is a longitudinal central rib is a present and it is a characteristic of a genus frustulia then after that the next genus is a coming craticula these are three photographs are again under light microscope these are craticula these are first which you observe it is a sporogenous stage of that craticula ampigua means this structure which you observe these are nothing but a imprint of their spores this a craticula cuspidata it is a larger in size it is not focus entirely under that oil immersion therefore i take only the half photograph of it and in this we observe that cuspidata the striation which is a present these are running parallel to each other transversely while in this a second uh, species acamodiformis we observe that in the central a very small hyaline portion is a present and striation which is a present these are longitudinally parallel with each other 
Then next genus that is nothing but a Frustulia. This is a Frustulia. It is again having. Yes. Frustulia. It is again having such a type of a polar noodle. These are connected with each other by that uh, rib portion and in center the raphe is a present. But important thing is that. Here, the parallel ribs we observe, and therefore it is coming under the Frustulia. Then the next genus is nothing but Anomoinus. These Anomoinus, when we observe here, irregular central portion is seen in Anomoinus, but the stri which is present, these are punctate and these are irregular one. Mastogolia, it is characterized by these chambers as well as the canals, these are only present towards their marginal side. These are canals as well as the chambers, these are present only at the marginal side and therefore it is the mastogolia. After that, the next genus is coming and that is nothing but a diplonis. These are diplonis, their shape is elliptical as well as a rounded one. Here we observe in a central the longitudinal line as well as the smooth area which is a crossing the stri. Means this is a longitudinal longitudinal area which is a present. It is a crossing the stri and it is only seen in a diplonis. After that, we uh, having this is a next form which is termed as a luticola uh, mutica. This luticola here. The inner central portion, no doubt it is highline one, but these are stigma, such a pore which is a present, it is a present, and it is termed as a stigma is a present, and it is a irregularly shortened. That is stigma which is a present, it is a irregularly shortened. When we observe their raphe, which is a turning towards their polar region, hook like arrangement or hook like structure we observed when it is uh, goes to this terminal end and in the center it is a deflected upside and it is a lutic luticula when we observe in this there are two walls these are present therefore it is a looks like the petri dish like structure then same uh, another species luticula Equatorials in these the raphe system and the striation which is a present these are having the variation central highline portion is seen in that equatorial arterialis. Then next one this is also Lucatilla but it is a very small in size saxophila it is termed as a saxophila here these two wall these are separated from one another. And the same situation, the in the center, these are two stri, these are seen here, same situation here, one short, one long. And therefore, it is a coming means in a central, the two stri, which is a present, no doubt it is a smaller in size, but in them also, one is a short and one is a long. And uh, therefore, it is a saxophila. Next one, that is the genus Silophora. These Silophora genus is a characterized by the central highline portion and that highline portion is termed as a bow tie like bow tie like central portion is a present and here polar nodule is a present polar nodule is a present therefore it is a term as a silaphora and this another form of silaphora in which we observe these bow like as well as a tie like highline portion and the variation in these two form on the basis of their striation, which is a present in that uh, coelophora. And this is only due to the scanning electron microscope. Such a type of a differentiation, such a keen observation is uh, only due to the scanning electron microscope. After that, the next genus is coming calonis. It is a calonis silequa. Their end is again a pointed one. And in the middle, it is uh, having certain swellings like uh, their shape. When we observe their raphe system and in exile portion, these exile portion is in this elongated exile portion we observe because the striation which is a present. And when we carefully observe the single single dot of striation is a present towards that highline portion and it is only present in that calonis. Second one is nothing but a Brachycera microcephala. These Brachycera microcephala. Brachycera microcephala, 
in this brachycera microcephala, we found that the shape is again a peculiar one. In the middle portion, it is a solar one. Towards the end, it is becoming pointed and it results into formation of such rounded structure. When we observe the striae in a central as well as a middle striae is a totally short one. And for these neighboring striae, their arrangement is a concentric like. Such a type of a situation is seen in a brachiosphera. And when we go towards the terminal portion of that wall, we found that the striae size becoming shorter and shorter. And that genus is nothing but a term as a brachycera. After that, nadium, it is again a very interesting genera. When we observe microscope, electron microscope, their margin is a wavy one. Such a type of undulation is a present in this nadium. And not only such a wall shape is a present, but when we observe the central portion, the raphe is a diverted towards opposite sides. Means these are two side direction of that raphe in the central portion we observe and it is only found in a genera nadium. The next one, chemopinularia. It is again a very small in size. This uh, species is again a very small in size. When we observe their shape and is a striation which is a present on that chemopinularia, we found that these striae, these are present in a chamber. Striae, these are present in a chamber, like we draw rangoli. The flower rangoli, if we draw, then such a type of a chambers we observe in the both side of these chemopinularia. And in a central portion, these are pore, which is a present. It is a term as a, uh, it is term as a nodule. And it is, or it is a sin which is a deflected upward and it is seen in chemopinularia. Then next one is nothing but a adlafia. This is a species of adlafia. It is a characterized by the terminal nodule is a unilaterally, unilaterally bent. The terminal nodule is unilaterally bent and uh, this marginal portion is again a thick one. When we observe their striation, this striation is also a very specific one. Raffi is a stop here. It is not bent anywhere, but we observe the clear space in this case. And that is nothing but Adlafia. Second one is nothing but a Mamamia. In that, we observe these, uh, 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 it is characterized by the median rib, which is a present, that a median rib with marked puncta. This is nothing but a marked puncta. It is a present in this Mamamia atomos species of that uh, diatom. After that, already I told that these diatom species, uh, genera, these are rich with species. And in them, this is a one genera in which we observe the number of species. And that genera is nothing but a term as a navicula. In this navicula, again, I show you the different forms of this navicula, we observe it on the basis of their shape, the arrangement of a striation in the middle region, the arrangement of a stria, it is again a different one. And their shape, terminal end, these are totally different with each other. I show you some photograph of this navic uh, navicula, navicula cara, this navicula constrica. In this plate, I show you only the central portion of this different form of a navicula. Navicula centrica, in this middle portion, central portion, the arrangement of a striae, which is again a very beautiful one. In this case, the, pole, uh, the central nodule formation is occurred and this striae arrangement is seen in this manner. In this uh, navicula medicostata, these linelet striations, these are present. In this navicula virudula, the number of striae, their arrangement is occur in this manner. It means central striae, these are run in this manner, but when it is goes to a central, it is showing the circular structure and it is seen in navicula viruda, virudala. Then this is nothing but a navicula rostilata. In this, we again observe the lineate striation in, the, uh, in these species. After that, this irifuga, it is again a very small in size. 
and these are having a very short stye in the middle and their number of a stye uh, that is uh, these are a uh, size of a stye length of size a stye is grows on increasing and again it is become only small it is a less in the number while in case of these uh, lesmoniasis in them we observe such type of a structure and last one is nothing but acuta in which we observe the alternate short and long stye these are present in the central region and therefore it is coming under the variety acuta their terminal end shape is also different one then the next genus is nothing but a uh, birimis these birimis in that the stye formation it is a complex one it is no doubt elongated chamber like structure is present and in that chambers we observe the internal pores these are present and that internal pores these are a term as a crime rooms these are term as a crime room means in these birimis these internal chambers these are present and these internal chambers or pores which you observe it is term as a crime rooms and it is seen only in birimis after that the next genus is coming it is nothing but a term as a pinularia these are pinularia their shape is again a shape is a, again a, a spindle shaped in that well developed raphi is a present and prominent striations which you observed in this pinularia in them these are pinularia colhapurensis their raphi system the stye system central hyaline portion is seen it is a larger in size after that this pinularia ilfilana this pinularia ilfilana means when we observe the cells walls of these uh, or cells of these pinularia we have to observe which type of their striation costa these are either thick one coarse one the raphi system which is a present in which fashion this area axial area formation is occur central area formation is occur such a type of a interesting beauty is a present in this genus pinularia then after that the next genera is coming it is coming under sigmoid the its meaning sigmoid means their wall shape is s shape wall shape is s shape and their raphi shape is also s shape raphi shape is also s shape and their shape wall shape is also s shape and in them two genus is coming one is nothing but a term as a pleuro sigma and another one is term as a gyro sigma the basic difference in between these two species in is in is in this manner when we observe the carefully striation in these pleuro sigma there are three stry system is a present three stry system one system is a transapical means which is running from one end to another end that is term as a transapical system and remaining two systems these are again a oblique one to that transapical system the remaining two systems these are running oblique fashion to that of wall and such type of a uh, stry system three stry system is a present in a pleuro sigma while in case of a gyro sigma only two stry system is a present one is a transapical one and another one is a right angle to that uh, uh, system and therefore it results into formation of such a check like structure these are two system which is a present in a gyro sigma these are perpendicular to each other and therefore such a check like system in their striation is seen in a gyro sigma this is nothing but a photograph of a gyro sigma maharashtrensis then after that we will turning towards the club shaped means their shape of diatom these are club shaped and it is a uh, in that the first genera which is coming it is term as a gomphonema these gomphonema in trichatum in them we observe that in another side axial portion central portion the raphi is absent only one is a present in this gomphonema their shape is a club shape their end is a rounded one as well as a roasted one the two ends which is having their shape is not similar with each other these are again uh, differ from each other means uh, the two ends which is having then here the important thing is that in their central region we observe one pore 
and that four is term as the stigmata. Stigmata is a present on one side of the term gonfonima cell. And this gonfonima is again characterized by these are having, these are having or it secrete the sticky substance. And due to that sticky substance, it is having the sticky, we say the stock. And due to that sticky stock, these gonfonema species, these are always attached to the substratum. It is always attached to the substratum due to it secrete the sticky substances and due to which it is always attached to the substratum. These are gonfonema magnifica. It is larger in size. Here we observe that is one stigmatic lobe and that is termed as a stigmata. Here, um, magnifica, it's indicate that it is larger in size. Then gonfonema constricum, these are having the various shape there one end is rounded towards the another end it, it becoming the uh, pointed one in the center one side we observe uh, two short stick uh, that is a striation and in another it is a totally absent one this raffi system which you observe it is undulated one undulated it is not a straight one but it is a undulation in that raffi system we observe and it is seen in gonfonema after that we observe these cilia their cap is rounded one their cap is a rounded one and end is again a pointed one this is a, an another species of that gonfonema these gonfonema diamanitum this gonfonema diamantum, it is again having such chambers like striation. And in that striation, these uh, pores like areolate striation is uh, present. The raffi system, these are also having such type of undulation. And one side, these uh, stigmata is uh, present. Here also we observe the striation, variation in striation, their shape and the two ends, these are also having the different shape. After that, the next genus is amphora. This amphora, this is again a girdle view of amphora. Actually, their shape is in this manner. One ventral side and another is a dorsal side. And here, raffi is a present. This is a one wall. And another wall of this amphora is here. Correct? This is nothing but, but it is a girdle view of that amphora. We observe the striation which is a present, the arrangement of the stria towards the margin side in this manner. One uh, that is due to this raffi, the two parts which is obtained, one is larger, another one is smaller, therefore it is termed as an asymmetrical one, and their end is again a rounded one, amphora copulata. Another form of amphora is amphora ovalis. Here, the variety limbica means in that case we observe the striation these are again a natal like striation is a present and therefore it is this is also girdle view of amphora ovalis after that the next genus symbela this is symbela it is also having the stigmatic pore on one side the raffi system is not a straight one it is having undulations and uh, due to that, the axilla region, which is having, it is also having different shape. It is again a very beautiful one, and it is seen only in Simbela. Means Simbela, uh, in that the shape is again boat shaped. We observe it is a uh, specific shape of that Simbela here. Simbela timida. We observe here the striation, which is a present, the stigmatic lobe, which is a present and the stry system, the arrangement of a striation, it is again a very, very nice one, which is seen in these tumida species of a symbela. Then symbela symbiformis variety neri, here undulation and that it results into downward direction of that raffi in the central region, the striation which is present, these are also having the specification symbiliformis. Then symbela tergidilla, here we observe the linolate fashion, the situation of that striation. Then the next one is the sagarensis, Simbela sagarensis. It is a characterized by stri, these are linolate one. The arrangement of a stri, these are linolate one and their exile area is again a broad one and it is nothing but a Simbela sagarensis.
Then the next one, symbola systula. Here, raphe is a thick one. Central pores, these are curved towards the dorsal side. And here, two stigma we observe in this case. That is a symbola uh, systula. After the completion of a symbola, we will turning towards the next genera, orisimba. This orisimba, in that case, the distal raphe ends dorsally deflected. The reflection of a raphe is a dorsal side. Here, the marginal ridge is a present. In that orisimba, marginal ridge is a present. And it is the characteristic of these orisimba. The next one is in cycle, uh, uh, next one is nothing but a symbopleura. In these symbopleura, we observe that the stri, which is a present in such a situation, chambers, and their shape is again a boat like the stri, it is a continuation we observe in that uh, symbopleura. Then stai, these are linolate one, and it is a punctate. Stai, these are linolate, and it is a punctate. It is a characteristic of a symbopleura genus. After that, in synopsis, in that the raphe polar ends, and these are ventrally bent. The uh, bent is a ventrally bent. Straight raphe, sorry, straight striation we observe in that in synom, uh, synomia means in that case. The stri, which you observe, these are again a present state fashion. After that, in Sionima, here, like Simbela as well as Amphora, their shell shape means it is having the, uh, the two sides, ventral side and dorsal side. But in that in Sionima, the ventral side is a straight one, it is an asymmetrical one. And the, uh, the pore system, uh, sorry. Uh, in this case, we observe the striation. The, the striation is again a different fashion arranged in these uh, two walls. It is also again a asymmetric type. Here, the distal raphe ends ventrally deflected. It is a ventrally deflected. This raphe system is a present in case of a insionema. After that, ephithema, it is again a very Beautiful structure. This is a V shaped raphe system is a present. V shaped raphe system is a present. And in this ephithema sorex, we observe that the costi and uh, we say that uh, alveoli. Alveoli means this is a structure, rounded structure, which is a present here. It is termed as an alveoli. And uh, in between that alveoli row, this structure is a present. It is termed as a costi. Here, Epithema is again a very beautiful diatoms observed in our nature. Means it is present, these are costly, these are strong one, and it is alternating with the rows of alveoli. Epithema, uh, epithema sorex. After that, this is nothing but epithema zebra. In that here, the position of a raphe is a present. The wall margin is again a thick one. And the ar arrangement of that costi and alveoli is uh, occur in such a fashion, it results into formation of a small net-like structure. These are nothing but alternate fashion. Costi and alveoli, these are present. And it is uh, termed as the epithema zebra. After that, the rofaldia, this uh, genus is coming. And this rofaldia, it is again, these uh, musculus, their shape is a sickle shape. Here, their raphe is situated V fashion in this inner side we observe. And here, pores which you observe, as well as a hole which is a present. These holes, these are termed as a porchuli. In this raphold, yeah, these holes which is a present, these are termed as a porchuli. And inside that, the striation is present and it is only present in a Rofaldia musculus. Then another genus Rofaldia jibba, when we observe, it is an elongated one, larger in size. Their end is again a rounded one. End is a rounded one in Rafaldia jibba. Their end is a rounded one. And in the middle, we observe such type of a narrow structure. Uh, such a notch is a present. Notch is a present in that Raffoldia jibba, and it is a characteristic of that Raffoldia jibba. Then we will turning towards the next genus, Nidgesia. These are Nidgesia. It is having 
the characteristic that is their raphi is a present only one side of that wall it is not present in the center but it is a present only on the one side of that wall uh, one side of that wall and that genus is nothing but a nichia and it is coming under nidgeoids it is coming under nidgeoids because the raphi system it is a present only on the one side of that two walls of that diatom and therefore it is term as a it is term as a nigia we observe these two walls of nigia here raphi system is not present continuous striation is seen because these raphi is a present on one wall of that uh, one wall of that nigia then second one nigia reversa why it is term as a reversa because the terminal end these are Uh, reverted in a two direction and therefore this nigia species is term as a reversa because their ends these are curved on opposite ends after that again one of the interesting uh, ornamentation which is a present on a diatom and that is nothing but a trabilonella this a trabilonella is characterized by the cell of that is ornamented with these transapical ridges transapical ridges these are present here also the raphis is present on one side or margin of that wall but on this we observe that the striation which is present these striation these are present in the form of a ridges and that ridges these are nothing but a term or uh, their arrangement of a ridges is a transapical one means when we observe here the circular circular these ridges these are seen and it is a beauty of a nature it is nothing but a diversity of a nature which is seen in a diatoms and name of a genera is trabilonella after that hangensia hangensia same it is their raphi is present towards this margin it is again a longer in size therefore we observe the continuous striation in in this wall and here it results into formation of a keels it results into formation of a keels and the ornamentation it is also seen like hangen uh, like tribolinella it is results into formation of a transapical that is a striation is a present in hangensia also hangensia amphioxus the hangensia amphioxus variety gracilis the terminal end is a very pointed one and here this kill fashion is a present or this raphi system is a present towards the margin the next genus is a denticula this a denticula it here we observe this a fabicula it is term as a fabicula and these a fabicula these are extending onto the wall face it is extending into the wall face and therefore it is a characteristic of a genus denticula that is in this denticula we observe this a fabicula and these a fabicula again a present only on the marginal portion and here entire wall is covered with that striation no doubt but this a fabili these are or fabula which is the present towards the marginal end and it is a facing towards the wall face after that this is nothing but again i showed the nigisia amphibia their kill portion how it is seen towards their marginal portion there again a mag more magnification of this then last genus which is a coming uh, under this diatom and it is the major surelloids why it is term as a surelloid because here the raphi system is a present entire on the circumference on the circumference this raphi system is a present and therefore towards margin it results into formation of a keels this is a structure which you observe it is known as a keel and these uh, walls these are transapical uh, costi this is a structure this is a print like structure ridges we observe here these are term as a costi these ovata their shape is oval one their costi is in this manner and it results into formation of such print like structure and it is seen only in these genus surella after that next genus in these uh, 
uh, in this surreal is nothing but a camphilo discus. The shape is a saddle shape. Shape is a saddle shape means the, their raphe system. No doubt it is a present on the margin and it results into formation of such type of, of prints. The kill, larger kills, their circular arrangement we observe. And therefore, that genus system as a campylo discussed. And last one is nothing but a cymatopleura. It is a transapically undulate, transapically undulate. And the raphe system is a present towards the margin. And that genus is term as a cymatopleura. Now, a question arises in your mind. Why we have to study these diatoms? What is their significance? Why we observe these diatom cell under microscopic? Why we uh, keen observation of these diatom is done? For that, there are a number of reasons. And that is nothing but a uses of diatoms. These diatoms, these are interesting in their sensitivity to specific environmental condition and which all together make them ideal biological indicators. These diatoms are biomonitoring tools of aquatic system. It is also applied in a paleoecological reconstruction of a past environmental condition. Diatoms are globally significant in biogeochemical cycles of carbon and silica. It is helpful in forensic research, archaeology, and in a number of industrial application. In number of industrial application, it is playing important role. And uh, again, these are uh, uh, applicable in nanotechnology. The diatom says when it is uh, settled down on the earth's surface, it results into formation of a, a matte-like structure and that is term as a di diatomaceous earth. And this diatomaceous earth is again very valuable because it is used as a natural filter. It is an absorbent filter and it is used as an insulating agent. Additionally, it is used as an abrasive, pesti abrasive pesticide catalyst in a metal polishes, as well as a food additive, caking agent, paper and plastic industry, as well as it is used in paints. And the last important significance of the diatom study is that in these diatoms or towards this diatom, the research scientists, these are turned. Why it is turned? Because these diatoms contain the long chain fatty acids and these long chain fatty acids these are helpful for the biodiesel production it is a use as an energy source and for this purpose the number of algologists these are turned towards these diatom study because they contain a long fatty acid chain and rapid multiplication rate and therefore these are diatoms these are used as a potential source for energy. And last, thank you. Thank you to all present here for taking a keen part in this program. I am thankful to organize her and my department colleagues, Principal Dr. Bhalerao sir, Dr. Vaidya sir, uh, ex-head Dr. S.D. Patil sir, for giving me such opportunity and share my information in this state level webinar. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, madam. Uh, it's a brainstorming, uh, the lecture you have given. Thank Am I audible? You. Am I audible? Uh -huh. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, as you suggested in the aquatic system, the diatoms, they are the monitoring agent for the uh -huh environmental conditions. So also the lichens, we know the terrestrial uh, lichens, they are again the, doing the same job for environmental monitoring of the air. So you have spoken a very uh, nice way and it was just a very, uh, you can say the, with the academic point of view, uh, so many details you have given and in nature, even though so much tiny particles are there as the diatoms, the diatomaceous earth is having immense importance as far as the petroleum products they are concerned, uh, which are there in, uh, explored as the oil and natural gases from this particular, the fatty acids, as we say. So thank you very much, madam. Uh, now I switch to uh, 
bakre sir uh, just uh, we will have the second lecture by dr patil sir ms patil sir from baramati over to bakre sir please yes thank you dr oik i am here to introduce today's next guest speaker dr hs pati he is associate professor and head in department of botany at vidya pratishthan's art science and commerce college baramati he has completed his msc in botany then mphil and then phd his area of specialization is angiosperms taxonomy and he has 30 years total teaching experience for junior senior and post graduate classes he has completed one ugc funded research project and he has published six national and international research papers and papers present four papers presented out of which international conferences are three then he has presented research papers in national conferences number is 7 he has attended national conferences seminars and symposia about 24 he has attended 27 workshops and he has worked as a resource person and guest speaker in eight different programs and he has written and published Ten books in botany. He has held positions uh, in different capacities as a member of board of studies in botany in Savitri Bai Phule Pune University uh, since two thousand five to twenty fifteen, and he was chairman of board of studies in botany. From 2006 to 2010, in the Department of Botany, Savitri Bai Phule Pune University, Pune, and he has also honored the posts in different committees of Pune, Savitri Bai Phule Pune University. He has also worked and working as a committee member or convener in different college committees. he has contributed in introduction of baramati pattern of sarvajanik swachhata abhiyan under the guidance of honorable principal dr arun arsul in collaboration with nearby four colleges of baramati during 2002 2001 he has worked as group leader in pulse polio vaccination program and rally for collection of funds to help in storm affected people in orissa earthquake affected people in gujarat and rally for vesan mukti led by dr kalyan gangawa he has organized personality development camps for students he has delivered and used to deliver lectures in different subjects like nature and our health nakshatra udyan yashwantra so honorable yashwantra chavan youth and nation and plants as a nature's gift he was awarded by different bodies uh, prolonged and dedicated services in the field of education and social work by uttar bharatiya sangh pune on 25th november 2014 and he is awarded and felicitated as distinguished lead distinguished leader in the field of science and technology by venus international foundation chennai in 2019 i have tried to brief his introduction which is very long uh, so i congratulate him to having such voluminous bio data and i request dr vaidya to take over the charge continuing in the much. same continuing the same at present 2021 he is the president of rotary club of baramati this is one more achievement he is doing a great social work and as well as the academic work also now just i request our second guest speaker dr anvantra patil sir from baramati to deliver his view thank you sir good afternoon 
everybody. Today's chairperson, Principal Dr. E. V. Bhalerao, sir. Chief guest, Dr. J. S. Choudhury, Secretary, Janta Shikshan, Sansta Vai. My friend and guide, Dr. Ramesh Vaidya, IQC coordinator, S.P. Kamble. All the dignitaries over here. I will just go through, superficially go through, with diversity. So, I will share the screen. It is great opportunity to be with you on this occasion. Today, it's, I would like to introduce about the wheels. So, weed diversity, it is very difficult task. What are the weeds? So, weeds are always associated with the structure, functional and productivity of the different ecosystems, including the agroecosystem. Now, it is the dire necessity of India to meet for the fodder, fuel, food, fiber requirements of our ongoing population. So, humans through their polluting activity are hiking the natural ecosystems out of their repression, homeostasis, which are fast willing the productivity of every ecosystem. There are various constraints in the ecosystem degradation and the food production such as diseases, pests, drought, changing climatic regime. Weeds are posing the serious problems as they cause more than 40% 40% weed yield. So, there are different opinions about the weed. Mostly we use the term unwanted plants. There is a no any plant which is unwanted. But the, the term weed was first coined by Jethro Tool. Then there are many definitions as per the opinion. Weed is a plant growing where it is not wanted. It is not unwanted, but plants at a wrong place or it is plant out of place. It is at unwanted place or a plant which is extremely noxious, useless, unwanted or the poisonous. Any plant or the vegetative excluding the fungi interfering with the objectives of requirements of the people, these are considered as a weed. For example, maybe wheat plant in the jawar field may be considered as a weed. Then a good definition it is given by Dr. V. M. Naik. More appropriate definition and only farmers have right to define the weed, the plant species which are going on the own at their own without human efforts. These are called as the weeds. So these weeds, they compete for, they are having the important position in the plant kingdom that competes for nutrient, moisture and the lands and reduces the quality and quantity of the produce. Then see the field. In the field, more than crop, weed is forming mono thickets. This is a parthenium, a single plant, single species of weed in the sugarcane field, having good abundance, density, and frequency as per the ecological point of view. These are the other weeds along with Arthenium, maybe Quarkerus, Xanthium, Alternanthera. Then this is dry cultivation, dryland cultivation. It is permeate with many 
grasses then weeds not only we compete with the agricultural lands but even in barren lands they also compete with the other fields other plants then barren lands are also occupied by many non native and native weed species so what is need what is the, the need to study the weed diversity because weeds they show reduction on the crop yield to protect the land values to avoid crop yield losses for quality improvement of farm products protection of human health and their efficiency to minimize the cost of insects and disease control to save problems of aquatic weeds and to improve the aesthetic values then what are the characteristics of the weeds the weeds they show the special characteristics the seed germination could take place in many environmental conditions then rapid growth through vegetative phases to flowering at maturity seed production in wide range of environmental conditions seed production may takes place continuously for as long as the condition for growth growth permits effective and varied mechanism of pollinations they can pollinated by the many agencies wind water and insects effective mechanisms of seed and fruit dispersal for short and long distances for example they are having very ornamentations hooks hairs spines paper scalex etc weeds grow even on the fallow land there is not necessary to having the good agricultural lands most of the weeds are highly productive following c4 pathway for carbon fixation their seeds have enough dormancy periods along with sexual reproduction some of the weeds possess effective modes of vegetative propagation that is rhizomes suckers corms bulbs they have natural ability they have natural ability to withstand with biotic and abiotic stresses and about the classification of weeds on the basis of life cycle weeds can be classified as annuals biennials and perennials on the basis of ecological conditions hansen and churchill put weeds in the three categories hydrophytes mesophytes and xerophytes they can be also classified based on their habitat for example occurring in the crop fields most of the amaranthus species 
They may occurring in the lawns, in the Iporbia species, occurring on barren lands and non-agricultural lands, mostly Cassia uniflora, one of the dominant invasive weed, occurring along with the railway tracks and road lines. Xanthium is one of the most common. Then occurring in water ponds, rivers, pools, and marshy areas. One of the most troublesome weed, that is the Ecornia. It is not troublesome for the not only common people, but they are also troublesome for the municipal corporations. For example, Kolhapur and Pune is fighting against them. Then based on the nutrition, some are complete parasites, some are partial parasites. Most of them are the atotropic weeds. Then there are two basic types of weeds on the basis of their origin, native weeds. Native weeds are associated with the particular ecosystem and are not the results of introduction from other country. These weeds are historically occurring in that ecosystem. Most of the weeds are the native weeds. Invasive weeds, we are quite familiar with the term invasion. Biological invasion, one of the most important, popular and worst example, not best, but worst example is the coronavirus. It is the biological invasion. These weeds are non-native or exotic and occur outside their natural adapted ranges. They are having very high dispersal potential. They threaten the integrity of natural ecosystems throughout the world by displaying, displacing the native plant communities. Only 30% of the weeds, they are occupying the 70% land. These are the invasive weeds. The protection and conservation of native plant species can be achieved through studies on ecophysiology, allelopathy, and biological invasion of weeds. So these are the some of the dominant native weeds, Abitulan, Acalypha, Acheranthus, Erva, Amaranthus species, Blenvillia, Calotropis, Cassia, then Leum, Orcarus, Pulen corylifolia, Soralia corylifolia, rather, its synonym, Cyanadon, world's worst weed, WWW, Cyanadon dactylon, Cypress rotundus, Dysera, Euphorbia, Hagonia, then Indiogophera, Lactioca, Axalis, Tephrosia, Thespi, Trianthema, Tribulus, Vernonia, Vidania. All these are the dominant native weed species. Then these are the dominant invasive weed species. Anthospermum, Alternanthera, Arzimon, Asclepias, Oravia, Cassia, then Croton, Silosia, Datura Pyrox, Euphorbia, Geniculata, Hyptis, Hypomia, Lagasca, Lantana, Malvestrum, Parthenium, Prosopis, Prosopis julifera, and Xanthium. These are the non-native, exotic, and dominant invasive weed species. Then there are some aquatic weeds, Ecornia, Limnophila, Pistia, Typha, Ceratophyllum, Amania. Then some parasitic weeds, Cascuta, Spriga, just Striga, Orobanki, these are the parasitic weeds. Then, just one. These are the weeds, they introduced from different countries. This is list of the invasive weeds. Then why invasive weeds are most successful or they, why they are showing successful dominance in the ecosystem? They have early maturity. First rain shower 
can start the germination of these weeds. For example, Boravia, Cassia, then they are having profuse reproduction by seeds and other vegetative structures. A single head of the Parthenium or many asterisk species. They are having thousands of seeds and they are having good viability, long life of seeds and vegetative parts in soil. We are quite familiar with the cyanodon. Seed dormancy to assure dispersal in time and adoption for dispersal as contaminants of crop plants. These are the gifts from the other countries to India, most of the weeds. These weeds having allelopathic interactions with associated plants. So phytosociological studies can reveal that these weeds having the other bad interactions with the native plants. Then spines and thorns that causes physical injury and repel grazing. Then ability to parasites, parasitize other species, cuscuta. Then seeds that are the size and shape of crop seeds. So separation by standard cleaning techniques is not effective. Vegetative structure with large food storage, survival and seed production under adverse growing conditions and high photosynthetic capacity. So these are the characters. Sir, next one. Somebody is stopping the sharing. Hmm. So how weed can be prevented? We cannot control the weeds, but we can prevent the introduction of these weeds. So there are some measures for weed prevention, not importing weeds or the weed seeds in animal feed using only clean crop seeds, cleaning and agricultural and farming equipments, preventing weed seed production, preventing vegetative spread of perennials, treatment to small patch to prevent expansion and education. One of the most important awareness regarding the weeds. Then there are some methods for physical control. These are common methods, mostly the farmers can adapt these methods, manual methods, mechanical methods, then some chemical methods, different types of the chemicals they are used for the control or prevent the weeds. Then some biological methods, there are some insects. There are some insects, nematodes, nematodes. They are also used for the control of these weeds. Then fungi-based herbicides. Then rhizobacteria-based herbicides and phytochemical-based herbicides. So these are the some of the control methods. Then although weeds by definition are bad, troublesome, but most of them are known for economic and other uses. For example, food and fodder, some of the weeds which are good vegetables, for example, Porchulaca, Amaranthus, Lactoca, Lactuca, Sinopodium, these are the good vegetables. Some of the fodders, that is Cyanodon, Alicicarpus, Desmodium. Then some of the weeds, they are used in the industries. For example, ty Typha and Saccharum species are used in cottage industry for making ropes and the other uh, fodders, uh, sorry, other fibers. 
then agriculture there are some of the weeds they are useful they give good nutrients and humus to the soil for example soralia and other leguminous or the fabaceae members protolaria xanthium datura they may be used in the agricultural lands some weeds are used to donate specific gene to our crop plants for example saccharum spontaneum then some of the weeds that is a most of the weeds they are having good active principles they are having the good medicinal uses we are quite familiar with vidania tribulus hagonia critica soralia all these species they are having good medicinal value there is a lot of scope to investigate the potential of weeds in medicine and as far as research concern there is a lot of scope for many of the science students teachers researchers they can use a good vegetation present on the earth it is easily available as experimental tools for researchers and teachers by considering the economic potential of certain weeds some authors may tend to define weeds as plants for which economic uses are yet to be discovered but this lowers the undesirable nature of weeds in agriculture and reduce our concern toward them as a harmful so it's my request to all of you do not think only negative aspects of the weeds because the grasses it is green gold of the earth can only protect our earth so for the weeds as far as the farmers are concerned they may be harmful but we have to search we have to contribute by studying these weeds for the human welfare so this is all about weed these are some of the dominant weeds non native rather invasive weeds so thank you very much thank you vale rao sir vaidya sir all the members of the college ipsc coordinator convener for giving me a very good opportunity in this pandemic situation i will be happy to come to vai for the presentation of all the aspects of weed so thank you very much sir bamburdekar sir karande madam थैंक यू सर बहुत अच्छा खूब छान के प्रेजेंटेशन थैंक यू सर कैन आई गेट योर प्रेजेंटेशन यस मैडम बिकॉज आई एम ऑल्सो वर्किंग इन बॉटनी डिपार्टमेंट सो स्टूडेंट्स रिक्वायर्ड सम प्रोजेक्ट वर्क सो आई कैन यूज कॉलेज मैडम मेहसाना अर्बन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस गुजरात ओके आई विल गिव यू ऑल द डिटेल्स ऑफ दिस फील्ड्स वेरी नाइस थैंक यू सर एंड वेरी इंफॉर्मेटिव यस आवाज येत नाही बकरे सर आपला
हेलो सर्वोच्च मैं फिर से 